announcements for Sunday, March 7th. As you know, these are emailed out to you on a weekly basis and encourage you to check your email that you might pick up all the announcements as well as all the details that are included in them. But just to highlight uh, a few of them for you today, I want to remind you that our United Methodist Women this Sunday and next are uh, gathering gifts for um, the NOAA lunches. This year, we're going to be supporting the NOAA lunches, which go to feed um, those who are hungry and in need in the city of Detroit. Um, we are supporting them this year by collecting money. Ordinarily, we would be fixing the lunches in our fellowship hall, but um, as you might imagine, due to the ongoing pandemic, um, have determined that it would be best for us to support NOAA this year by collecting money. And so our United Methodist Women will be making a gift of $500 to NOAA. If you wish to contribute to that, invite you to send a check made out to St. Matthew's UMW. It can be sent to Mary Ann or to Kim in the church office. Uh, their addresses are in the announcements and we will make sure that your gift goes to support our United Methodist Women's Mission Emphasis here in March. If you have any questions, we invite you to get a hold of Mary and her contact information is in the announcement as well. Also, if you're using the online giving, know that you can select to give a gift to our UMW and in the memo line where entirely or on your check, if you'll enter in March mission, this will also help us designate your gift to support NOAA lunches. So all those details in your announcements this week. We also have some news to share regarding Little Guys and Dolls. If you don't recognize that name, that's the daycare that operates out of our church and continues to operate during this time. Uh, their owners, Camille and Gordon Rutherford, are retiring after 42 years uh, of operating the daycare. And so uh, we offer our congratulations to them and we also offer our congratulations to Ann Bodie, who is purchasing the daycare uh, from the Rutherfords and is now the operator. There's an announcement in our bulletin listing all of this, uh, but just to highlight some details, uh, Ann has a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Central Michigan University with many years of experience teaching all different ages and also in a few different countries. Uh, Little Guys and Dolls serves local families in need of preschool and childcare services, as well as kindergarten, latchkey, and summer camps. Uh, their hours of operation are from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. year round. And uh, if you know a family who might be interested, or if you yourself are interested in um, hearing a little bit more of the services, their contact information is in the bulletin. Um, I do think it would be a fantastic thing if as a congregation, we might send either uh, congratulations to Camille and Gordon Rutherford for their 42 years of operating Little Guys and Dolls or to Ann Bodie. Um, she, she's worked with the center for 12 years with the Rutherfords and is very excited now to be the new owner. Uh, I think it would be a great a sign of uh, support if our congregation could offer notes of congratulations to, to Ann at this time. Those can be sent to Little Guys and Dolls address, uh, our church's address, and I'm sure that those uh, notes of congratulations would be very much welcome. Uh, great to, to uh, begin another chapter with Little Guys and Dolls, uh, a relationship between our congregation and the daycare. And so we celebrate that news today. So our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3. Uh, a very familiar passage for many of us. 
um, either written by or certainly attributed to King David. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters, and he restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is the word of God in scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, for you are our rock and redeemer. Amen. So mine is bad. Admittedly, remarkably bad. What I'm referencing here is my sense of rhythm. More so than exercising here a conjured up sense of humility, I am speaking the truth. I'm reasonably confident that Bob Barkoviak and Karen Harkness, who are with us this morning, and or any other member of our praise band, Diane Edelman, I am reasonably confident that they can attest to this fact as they uh, see me, uh, as they lead us in worship as the praise band, and I'm often in front of them and trying to clap along. I am reasonably uh, confident that they would uh, uh, stand by this notion that my sense of rhythm is, is, is bad, uh, remarkably bad. Even with Karen pointing out the beat of a song with a tambourine, if my spirit, if the spirit moves me and I start clapping, I inevitably lose the beat. My only hope is either to stop and try again at picking up the rhythm of the song or to pretend that I am somehow providing a harmonious or syncopated beat to everybody else as we offer our praise. Please understand, it's not that I don't enjoy praising God with music, more so that I need help, lots of help, when I turn to music to pick up the rhythm of life and that of our Creator. Now, if we're talking about beauty, specifically the beauty of God's creation, well then, I find my soul more able to pick up on my own life's better rhythm than that of our Creator. As we continue in Lent and with our Lenten study of John Eldridge's um, book, Get Your Life Back, Everyday Practices for a World Gone Mad, we consider nature's role in restoring our soul. In his book, Eldridge invites us to consider simple day-to-day -day practices that may help us live the life that God intends, or to learn more fully, to live freely and lightly, as Jesus offers us in Matthew chapter 11. And so on the first Sunday in Lent, you might recall if you were with us that we considered the one minute pause, introducing at least twice a day, intentional pauses of 60 seconds to breathe, turning everything and everyone over to God, asking God to restore our union, to restore our relationship with him. Just taking two minutes out of the day to pause and pray. Last Sunday, we considered Eldridge's invitation to simply unplug, recognizing that most of us are consuming once unimagined amounts of media each day, upwards around 100,000 words on a daily basis, 
Eldridge introduced to us the idea of cutting down on one of those main sources, yeah. our cell phones. And so he introduced the challenge of practicing the following each day, turning off our cell phone at eight o'clock, keeping technology out of our bedrooms, turning somewhere else other than our smartphones when we start the day and dictating when we respond to a phone's notification and not the other way around. I hope you found these practical uh, uh, tips uh, and practices, uh, a meaningful way for God to etch out more time in your day and in your life to have your soul restored by God and God's presence. Today on this third Sunday in Lent, Eldridge reminds us of the restorative nature, of the restorative role of nature and its beauty. And wow, do we need it? According to a study published in 2001, which Eldridge cites, the average person now spends 93% of their lives indoors. 93% of our lives. Yep. Here's what this means. As of 2018, the life expectancy in the United States was just about 79 years. And so in one's lifetime, at the rate of spending 93% of our lives indoor, we would have spent nearly 73 and a half years indoors, insulated from nature and the bounty it has to offer us while only spending a precious five and a half years in our lifetime of 79 years outdoors. Again, that's quite staggering if we think about it. And quite staggering when we think about uh, all that God proclaims to us just through creation. John Eldridge points out for us that beauty has a way of speaking and healing our souls. According to Eldridge, the beauty we encounter in nature reminds us that goodness still exists in our world. That goodness either prevails or is, is preserved or will somehow outlast all harm in darkness. Eldridge also reminds us that beauty also has a way of singing out to us or calling out to us a song of abundance. He writes, quote, beauty reassures us of abundance, especially that God is abun absolutely abundant in goodness and in life. Beauty reassures us there is plenty of life to be had, end quote. I think in the sharing of our members this morning, as we talked about the reminders of God's beauty in our homes and, and close by, that some of the, those messages were, were being conveyed in the sharing of our members. Think about Janet's uh, mini cherry tree or the glass jar of uh, wheat kernels in Sarah's kitchen or the appreciation of uh, the creatures on Kim's patio. All these messages are being sung to us on a daily basis. According to another study studied by Eldridge, this one conducted in 2015, and published in Harvard Medicine's uh, magazine, research shows that patients recovered faster, needed fewer painkillers, and left the hospital sooner if their windows allowed views of nature. Beauty has a way of healing us and of restoring our soul. The 23rd Psalm is arguably one of the most familiar passages from the Old Testament, if not the entire Bible. 
despite this, biblical scholars have long debated its origins, where it came from. Some arguing it was written by King David himself, Israel's greatest king. They say Psalm 23 points to the time when David and his followers eluded the traitorous plots of his own son, son Absalom. Others contend that this particular psalm was more so penned in David's name. In other words, this psalm is more or less attributed to David because of its style and its content. With this, they argue that the 23rd Psalm has more to do with our faith journeys as believers and in general, not so much just David's life experiences. Either way, perhaps what resonates with us so much in this beloved psalm is the way it speaks to the abundant and restorative nature of God in God's ways. Where pastures are green, souls are restored, and our cup overflows. In line with his assertions about beauty and God's creation, Eldridge makes note, makes note of where God takes David to restore his soul. Hearing once again the 23rd Psalm, verses 1 through 3, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet oh, waters. He refreshes my soul. Eldridge goes on to contend, God could have taken David anywhere for this soul work, for this restorative work. God could have taken David to his palace to the home and company of family and or friends, or even as Eldridge points out, to the bustling markets of Jerusalem. And yet God chose nature. God chose nature to restore David's soul, to help David once again recover life's better rhythm than that of his creator. I trust that God does the same with us, beckoning us to green pastures and beside quiet waters. Too good to be true? Can coming in touch with nature truly be this good for us? Well, I invite us to consider the following.
Franzalvo's photographs are once captured by our members. And it's a reminder, I hope, that, that beauty is not something that is elusive, that only a few of us get to enjoy. But if we look for it, um, it's abundantly present. And some of those pictures are, are from, uh, from countries halfway around the world. Others are from uh, our backyards. And so here are the practices. Eldridge encourages us for us to receive nature's bounty. Uh, very simply, get in touch with nature every day. Get outside, and if you can't get outside, bring God's beauty inside. For some of us, even getting outside, taking a walk is difficult every day. Have a plant inside, a pitcher inside that reminds us, that allows us to see God's creation. Receive beauty for the gift that it is. Pause and let the beauty minister to you. Eldridge brings up in his book, you know, we wouldn't walk on a, on a crosswalk past a $100 bill. Likely, most of us would, would bend down and pick it up and pause for a moment. We ought to do the same when we encounter beauty, to give th thanks to God. Here's a short prayer that he offers and, and encourages us to, to offer as a thanksgiving. Thank you for this beauty. I receive it into my soul, and with it, I receive you. In it, by it, through it. Your love, your goodness, and your life. May that be our prayer as we encounter God's grace, the beauty of creation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.